Hello everyone, welcome again in this video I'm going to show you demonstration of an important project in uh, uh, Spring Boot and ReactJS with microservices. So first talk about the technical details about the project, what it's using. So it's using a Spring Boot. A Spring Boot, like it's divided into the two parts, the back end and the front end. For the back end it's using a Spring Boot. Okay, and uh, JWT auth is there, authentication is there, microservices are there, okay, different microservices are there, and for the front end, it's using React this okay, uh, with bootstrap HTML, like you can say, obviously, in the render React this will render the HTML, JavaScript, and uh, other things like bootstrap and styling things, okay to connect our front end and back end it's using the rest apis okay rest apis and also you can run those apis over the postman okay <clears throat> uh, apart from that it's using uh, eureka cloud server and let's run the application and check the features and functionality also i want to clear out some things like uh, if you need this source code uh, you can connect with us over the mail skype or whatsapp the contact detail and that in, into the description is available also you can navigate to the website and you can directly buy it from there and after buying in configuration like if you want remote configuration from us so my team will do the setup at your machine and after that you need to follow this demo and i'm going to show you how can you so like operate it and how can you uh, run the application over there so we will we are going to see these things into the demo the project name is bank management application so they are here into the eclipse we have multiple services like one gateway is there that's going to handle our apis our microservices and card credit card service are there eureka server is there we have we have a gift card service we have a loan service we have a local service login and transaction service so multiple services are there so let's start all the services one by one so how can you run that so these are the separate microservices so what you need to do just uh, you know, open the runner file for each service right click on uh, it go to run as then it is a java application make sure while you're running the application all your services are running on a specific port number so i have just run the cloud gateway okay you will see it will run here and once it will start i will start another service so you can see it's waiting for other services to start so I'm going to start the other service. So let's start the credit card service. I will do the same. Right click, go to Java project, Java web application, and will start my other service as well. <clears throat> okay. Next thing, Eureka. We are going to start the Eureka server. Right click on it. Go to run as run it as Java application. Okay. It will start your Eureka server as well. After that, we have a gift card service. So I'm going to run this gift card service as well. And how I am managing yeah, that like service is started. And you can see the server is started on the specific number, showing me this message. After that, I can run the another service. So run is run on Java application. So another service is going to run now. So we have run the cloud uh, Eureka gift card. And now it's, we are going to run the loan service. Okay, after that, I'm going to show and demonstrate the front end as well. First, I'm going to running all the services. So it might take some time, but once all the execution is done, then you can execute the application. It's not using the monolithic architecture. We have a different front end, different back end. So that's why we have to running all the microservices one by one. And uh, I think it's running on the port number at 0683. Okay, well, let me run it again. If it will work. 8083 is also running over there. You can see the, so the loan service are running, local service. Right click, run as run on Java application. Two more services we need to run. So the login service is going to start and which port number it will use. It will use 8081. So let's wait for that 081 to start. So when you start each and every service, all the requests will be uh, handled into the Eureka server. I will show you how can you open that and how can you use it. 
So after login service, let's run the last transaction service. Okay. So make sure where your uh, Eureka server is running. My Eureka service is running on the port number at eight seven six one. So just keep it in mind. Open your browser. Okay. Uh, and enter localhost and the port number. When you open this, it will start your Spring Eureka. Uh, this is a cloud server. So here we have, we have registered all the services that that are automatically the service will be registered and it will create a payment gateway by payment gateway over our, our payment gateway is running on double nine double nine it's running on the credit card service is running on 8085 gift card service is running on 8086 uh, loan service is running on 8083 8084 and 802 now uh, there is the backend we make sure all the services are running so we have one two three four five six six uh, five services and one gateway and one user server now let's move to the front end so this is your for your front end um, for this application i just open our src package you will see all those sets component helper is there uh, i just uh, run here npm start command and it's started and running on a localhost triple thousand okay localhost three triple zero okay uh, so let's uh, this is our home page when I execute the application when I execute the application on the front end when I hit the npm start command it will start on the local host 3000 and here into the registration we have multiple options this is the home page for the online bank management here we have registration so <clears throat> also to manage the database and the backend we are using mysql so it's this is a mysql database it has multiple tables that is connected with a microservices different different microservices into the user table you will see three types of roles admin employee and customer so we will register as a new user and by default the user will be registered as an employee only as a, as a, as, a, as a customer only so i'm going to fill up some dummy data and let's clear out the things like, like valid enter valid phone number and when I hit this, it should be contain. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. So automatically the user is registered and it's log log. It's redirected over the login page to log out. When I refresh my database, it will see the new record is available over there. Now I can I can log in with the, this user. But first, let's log in by one by one. So first, I'm going to log in as an admin and check what admin can do, and then we'll move to the other users like. Uh, customer and employee so i just enter uh, username and the password for the admin here you can see this is the admin's user so what admin can do admin can check its own profile this is up coming here and uh, admin can uh, manage the employees that is registered admin can add a new employee let's suppose i'm going to add a new so i just enter mp mp at the gmail.com now let's enter the password demo at the rate one two three address the phone number i just click on the register <coughs> the record is saved into the database and it's showing here the main thing uh, the employee is an important user here so i'm going to log in as an employee so let's see what employee can do so for the same i'm going to enter my username here as employee okay and um, I think we need to run the parallel instance of the application. So I just log in as an employee. Here for the employee, employee can check the uh, account details, all the account details, and the status of the accounts active or pending or inactive. So these are the pending accounts, these are the active accounts. Here we have a customer detail. Recently we have logged in with this user, but this user doesn't have a active account like account number over here so how can this uh, like we can approve the user or provide account number to this we'll see all of the details in the mobile we have a transaction options here so here uh, the admin can check the all the transactions and uh, loans <clears throat> so pending loans active loans closed loan or loans will be displayed here i just go here and check the account details so recently we have added one uh, user over there and this user uh, his customer name is this this username we have this username that we recently added and now we are going to check the account details 
for this so this is the six and six uh, users that is created by the like, like user id is eight and the account id is one so currently it's showing me as a pending so as an employee what i what i can do i can active the account i just enter the account id i active the account and when i did this it say account is actively successfully confirmation email has been sent okay now if i go to the email section and check this account is active now and the ifsc code is this and this is the account number now and if i move to the account all accounts here also it will show me the like active accounts and the customer section okay now <clears throat> Uh, to delete it delete the user we have to enter the account id number as well so uh, here we can manage the employee can manage the accounts like pending and active accounts <coughs> customers transactions so let the all the transactions will uh, check like transactions done by the users we can uh, like uh, filter out the data if required also we can print the pdf okay the data will be displayed to the pdf form here so complete uh, complete data will be displayed here according to this form credit and debit and after that we have a loan section here we can uh, here we can uh, upload the data uh, like pending <coughs> we can check the pending loans active loans closed loan and all the loans details here and credit card details under the credit card section we can check all the credit cards active or pending locus detail the same features are there so now let's log in as a customer and then check what customer can do and then we'll move it to into parallel and run the things in a parallel so here i create another instance in my private window and i am going to log in with this u user this is just we have activate and here we have again product section transaction loan credit card I just go to back and log in as a customer now i just enter the username and the password for this new customer and here i can view the profile of this customer and i can check the account so account details when i click on the show account detail it will show me the account numbers and my ifsc code and all the details i click on the class close <clears throat> i go to the my transaction transaction are zero now deposit let's suppose i'm going to deposit ten thousand on this account to this user so I just click on the deposit enter amount and submit it's uh, submitted now and when I go to the my transaction now one transaction in green icon is displaying now and deposit okay a withdraw let's suppose I'm going to do withdraw 500 rupees I just click on the withdraw enter amount click on submit the rest of pay will call and will display this when I go to the my transaction it will display into the right color and bank transfer let's suppose i want to transfer this amount to any other account so any other active account only so i just let let, let me open <coughs> this account so this user id uh, the user have a user id 6 so we are going to transfer some amount to, into this account so i'm going to enter this amount ifsc code of this user so this is the ifsc code for this user username let's say um, the user number six so user number six have a username as a demo user one two three <clears throat> okay here i'm going to enter 200 rupees click on the submit the payment will be submitted and directed from this account also it will enter into the my transaction id okay if i go here into the my account it will check the balance is remaining one uh, 19,000 it's it, it, it it's showing 19,300 okay now like uh, we have added or uh, deposited over 10,000 and 10,000 will automatically added when we create account to the user so there were a total 20,000 that's showing this my loan uh, that there is a no loan apply for loan yes I can apply for the loan home loan let's say 15 lakh duration let's say 24 months 15,000 is thousand like 50,000 apply that you have already applied for the home loan so I'm going to create a personal loan or vehicle loan so there are some criteria so we can apply for the other loans one by one so it's showing now you applied loan and you can check the loan payment you can do the loan payment from here <coughs> all the EMIs and loan and it's showing as a pending here so when I go to the employees uh, employee side now and here this is a 
customer side here this is the employee side so employee side when i check the loan and when i check the pending loans i can see the one loan is vehicle loan is coming as a pending loan so i go to the active and i need to activate it so this vehicle loan which is a loan id 3 i can go active loan i can activate it okay when i hit the active button it will active my loan and now there is no pending loan okay when i go here and check here and uh, let me restart it because it will take to update the data and it was a customer i'm not sure yeah we have to log in as a customer so we have logged in as a this customer now let's log in as a customer again and i just hit the login button you go to the my loan it's showing now active Similarly, we can have the demonstration for the uh, like uh, like my gift card. If I want to send the gift card to anyone, like recipient name, recipient email ID, I can send the gifts. I say I'm gonna say at gmail.com and the card amount. Let's say I'm gonna write five thousand. Click to the submit. The gift card will be sent to the user. And here, if I see in my account. Let me let me let me, let me manage this so it will deduct the amount okay and my gift card will be display here buying buy card will be display here and that user will be also there also employee will can check these details into the uh, into this 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 gift card section sorry okay gift card doesn't have access for that employee so we have a credit card section and we have a locker section and here we have a uh, credit card gift card credit card and local section so if i apply i can apply for a new credit card let's say credit card name and some cards are there when i click to the apply card this request will be sent it to the user and here into the my card i can check my credit card close credit card make a payment i can make a payment calculate emis payment lockers all the details will be displayed over there and the same detail will be reflected to the user when I go to the all, all credit card I refresh it and I can see the employee is going to log in and uh, credit card or credit card section I can see one credit card that is pending so I can activate it from here and I can check the closing request all the request so that's all about the react and spring boot project and if you need the source code just please connect with our team um, by this whatsapp skype or mail so we'll provide the complete source code also we'll set up and make sure the project is working same as those in the demo after configuration uh, also if you need an explanation how the things are working into the back end so we have multiple services you can take the service according to your requirement thanks for watching video from the code one